What's up guys, Tyler with the MX Factory, and today I want to tell you guys a little bit of story. I want to tell you why I'm sitting here right now. What most of you don't know about me is that I, I moved out of my house when I was 16 years old and had a little bit of a rough upbringing. Dropped out of school the whole nine yards, didn't finish, didn't finish high school until later, and uh, had like a rough 16 to 18, not in the sense of rough like getting in trouble, just rough like figuring life out. I was pretty, pretty square. Right? I was a pretty square guy. All I did was work out and try to eat healthy and do those things, but I wasn't doing the traditional what 16-year-olds were doing. Well, long story short, I had to quit riding at that point, and I was really good when I was 15. Uh, I had to quit riding, and so when I was 18, I got a phone call from this guy named Randy Yoho. Maybe some of you that are watching this video may know this guy. He owns a track in Florida called Dade City Motocross. And Randy Yoho said, Hey, Tyler, I have a dirt bike for you if you want to race it. Um, and at that time I didn't have a dirt bike, so the answer was easy, yes, but there was a stipulation, a pretty big stipulation, but at that point I didn't really care, I just wanted to race, right? Like I would have probably said yes to about anything at that point. I had been sitting in a gym, working in a carbon fiber shop in the middle of the summer, a sweatshop, no AC, carbon fiber everywhere, just not great, right? Like I experienced those things. And uh, he's like, you've got to go through one of my training schools, one of my riding schools. And at that point, I had my ego. I was like, no, I'm not going to do the training. Like that was in my head. I was like, no, no, no. But I said yes anyway. Well, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into. So basically, I show up for day one. It was you had to be there three days a week, three hours a day, and you weren't allowed to ride anywhere else. Like you weren't allowed to touch another track of any sorts. And I get to this hard packed, bumpy rut, like crappy turn track. And we did not jump one jump for three months. We didn't jump one jump. Everything we did was for hours on end. So one thing at a time for hours on end. I went from being a really fast rider that crashed three out of four rides to almost never crashing and becoming like almost flawless with my technique. And when I would race, people would be like, you look like you're not putting much effort in because my technique was so good. I was tying the pieces together that well. And through that process, at 18 years old, being humbled by that misery, right? Through that process, it sparked my brain. I'm like, more people need to know this, right? But I still wanted to be a pro racer. So I like, I went on about that adventure. I was like, I gotta be a pro racer. I kind of put the whole coaching thing to the back burner and, and uh, pushed it aside. But I knew that it changed me. And if it could change me, that it could change a lot of people. And I knew subconsciously, in the back of my mind, that sometime I would circle back and recreate that because I knew that's what the sport needed, right? If it could keep me safe, um, as wild as I was and as fast as I was, then it could keep anyone safe, right? And that's why the MX Factory started, was from those three months of misery, doing one piece of technique at a time. I'm talking just ride with your head forward. Okay, you're gonna do that for three hours, 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off for three hours. Okay, I'm gonna go sit in my truck. Like that type of, you know, not out there screaming and reminding, like do it, or leave kind of work. A lot of people ask how the MX Factory started and why it started. And that's really it. It started in those three months when I was 18 years old. I had no idea that it started then. I had no idea that it was gonna lead to what it is. I had no idea that it was gonna motivate me to give that back to millions of people. But that's what started it. And for me, in that moment, I knew that in 2040, motocross is changed forever by dirt bike coaching. And it's starting to happen. Like it's starting to happen. If you look around, there's more YouTube channels popping up with education. There's more places to go to get education. It's happening. Manufacturers are getting involved. Supercross is getting involved. Outdoor motocross is getting involved. The Enduros are getting involved. Right? Motocross coaching is like a currency that's expanding. If you're gonna put stock in anything, put stock in yourself and put stock in motocross coaching. Right? Go get some. If you want your life on a dirt bike to be more fun, go get some. Like I'm, I'm telling you this, like. If I was a, and a financial advisor and motocross was money, you'd have to go get coaching. And so that's why the MX Factory started. That's the story that, where it began. Those are the moments where I cut my teeth in understanding proper technique and understanding how to truly get it. Most of you coaches out there, they're just have a lap timer in your hand. You're not doing anyone any good. Okay, like put the lap timer down and make sure their technique's good for hours and hours and hours. And if their parents suck, and don't want to keep them there, let them go, right? And if you suck as, a, as an adult and you don't want to stay there, then you're just going to continue to suck, right? You have to ingrain the foundation before you work on speed. And that's what we're going to do here forever at the MX Factory. If you don't like it, kick rocks.
Uh, something that's pretty cool that's coming up is that we are revamping our whole Patreon. And if you're in the factory rider tier, we're sending free t-shirts to those people. And also we're doing a Zoom call the last Tuesday of every month. We're all gonna get on a Zoom jam. We're just gonna be on there and letting everyone ask questions, talk. I get to know you, you get to know me, and just really kind of create community there and, and uh, make sure everyone's questions that they've been bundling up inside and haven't got to ask me are answered fully. And just to put it in perspective for you, like, okay, Tyler says go get coaching, but maybe I don't live near a coach, right? Um, or maybe I can't afford a coach. Well, this is what the YouTube channel's for. Like, there's hundreds of videos here that are free. It took me a lot of time to understand and a lot of money to pay someone to make, right? But they're free for you to take those and advance yourself with them. And if you can find a coach, let's just say for easy numbers, a coach costs you $100 an hour, maybe they're cheaper, maybe $50 an hour, but we're gonna say $100 an hour for even, even math. You've got a $10,000 motorcycle. I see people all the time buy the $10,000 motorcycle. Before they even leave the shop, they finance the pipe, the $5,000 extra suspension, and all of a sudden they've got a $20,000 note and they don't even know how to ride the thing. Like what makes a lot more sense to me is you go buy a used bike for three or $4,000 and you put 17,000 into your coaching and you become really good and really safe and you're not paying doctor bills and you're actually progressing. You're able to go to all these different tracks all over the country and ride whatever you want rather than just go to the one smooth local track that fits your riding style and makes you feel like a rock star and feel good, right? So maybe think about that. When you're investing in your graphics, your gear, your bike, the truck, the trailer, the RV, the motorhome, like what's the most important thing when you start riding dirt bikes? Your technique, right? How you ride the dirt bike. It's no, it's like no like uh, conspiracy that there's a million different golf training tools and different training tools for like sport like golf, right? It's a huge industry, but it's very technique driven. When you buy your set of clubs, they fit you to your set of clubs. And a lot of times when you're getting a fitting, they're in there telling you about your swing and that's that usually gets you to some sort of coaching or some coach time right so every sport has that when you go sign up for baseball as a kid you get a coach when you go throw football you decide you want to play you get a coach all these things happen you get a coach right away but in motocross we just spend all our money and we bypass the coach we may see him standing on the side of the track at the races or at the at the practice tracks but we just say you know i, I don't really need coaching Truth of the matter is, is you need to stop money. Stop spending money in places where you don't need to spend it and get yourself a coach and become better. Now getting the right coach is important too, so make sure you're paying attention. Are they teaching me fundamentals or are they teaching me speed? If they're teaching me speed, that only matters if you're top five in the B class at Loretta's or A class at Loretta's or super mini or if you're already that good, right? Then we need to work on our speed. But until then, you need fundamentals. You've gotta do it, you've gotta do it. Yeah, so when you go hire a coach, here's some things that are, going to help you tremendously. One, you're going to do things that you wouldn't do on your own. And that goes for anything. You go hire a fitness trainer, you're going to work out in a different way than you would if you walked in the gym, right? So if you go hire a coach, you're going to practice things that are foreign to you, uncomfortable to you. And that's going to make you comfortable in scenarios where you're surprised and uncomfortable when you're riding, which happens all the time, right? So that's one piece of it. The other piece of it's like just understanding some goal setting for kids and accountability and discipline. Like all these things come along with getting coaching. And some of this stuff's really hard for us as adults to do because we're spending our free time and leisure money on it and kids to do because they just don't have any example of that, right? And so make sure you hire a coach that's going to be the example of that and then hold the kids accountable, right? Make sure they're disciplined. Make sure they're not just out there to goof off. And same thing with you adults that are riding. Make sure there's some accountability to yourself. Like, hey, I'm going to go work on footwork all this month. I just got done with an online client, my first online client ever. It was a great time. If you guys are ever interested in online coaching, I'm going to open up to two or three more people here and there as it comes. But we had the best time because he was so disciplined and he got so much better in three months. Everything I said, he tried fully. And he made a lot of progress just riding Saturday and Sunday every week. And all I was was, hey, I'm going to write your plan. I'm going to call and see how you did and I'm going to tell you where you went wrong. He improved at his races, he improved at his practices, he was having more fun, he got more motivated throughout the consistency of the program. All right, so that, that's a big thing. When you're, when you're making the step to become a student to the sport, you make a huge leap forward as far as really, really feeling what the sport has to offer. 
Uh, to elaborate a little bit on the online coaching, if you guys are ever interested in online coaching, I usually do it in three month blocks. I think that's about the ample amount of time to actually make some good progress. Uh, two to three days a week of riding, however much you can get in. Also a Zoom call a week is how we do that. So if you have any interest, just shoot us an email. Links down in the description below, a little triangle, whatever part of the screen is, it'll pop it down. You can find where you need to go from there. We'd love to have you.